Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. And after covering Celine Dion, I need a bit of a palate cleanser, but I am back into the full electronic based sampling more or less music. We are and and I'm doing a greatest hits album too, which you know, if you're one of my regular viewers, you know that I generally avoid them except for when I do special occasions as well. <sighs> Janet Jackson, okay, so Janet Jackson, 1986 to 1996, so 10 years span of music. I'm not going to go and find all the little itty-bitty details on which uh, songs were released in what order. I'm assuming that they do them chronologically on here, I hope so. Um, let's just get into these songs, Okay. Got nothing else to do except for that, right? All right, so first song that opens up this album is Runaway. Three minutes, 34 seconds, and opens up, basically for me, it's a really rough start to the album because it's basically a pop track. It's it's your basic kind of bubblegum pop kind of vibe, girl 80s pop, you know, Cindy Lauper, Madonna... You know, that whole girls just want to have fun kind of thing. That's, that's what this reeks of to me. All right. Then we're moving on. And next track is, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Um, this one takes me back to my days of roller skating. Uh, I remember this one a lot as a kid. It has a bit of a darker edge to it. And one of the things I like about Janet is, and this happens through a lot of her songs after this point, where a lot of them have that slight darker tinge to them. Uh, musically, like, not that she's gone darker, not that she's gone bad, and yeah, she does that too, but, um, this is just, you know, there, there's that underlying kind of dark shadow, we'll call it, and it's cool, I dig it, you know, it really gets into it, uh, then next up, we're into Nasty, you know, Nasty, Nasty Boys, you know, okay, so, gotta say, well, this is typically not music I would enjoy. Yeah, man. Janet does this one well. Really enjoy it. Really like everything she does. Um, this is one of those songs that, um, you know, really, it, it is basically nothing but electronic music, but it's done so well and done so right that you can't help but enjoy it. Um, then we're on to When I Think of You. Uh, this is a little more fluffy again, more like the very first song on the album. Um, I didn't know this song prior to listening to this album for the first time. It's not a song that sticks with you either, really, as far as I'm concerned, so, you know, I can understand. Then we're off to Escapade. So, at this point, I'm going to mention that not a single song on here was written by Janet Jackson. She just performs them. And um, the writers for this, this album, all these songs that span a decade, are James Harris III and Terry Lewis, who have written for a whole, if you go check them out, man, they've written for a whole slew of people. And they've won a whole slew of awards on all the stuff they've written. This song shows that it's these songs are written by two musicians. No matter how much sampling they're doing or anything like that, it's being done by two musicians. Because these songs can easily translate to other works as well. Like this song, Escapade, because it easily translate to a hard rock song or an, even a punk song. You take out like the little fluffy embellishments that are on the keyboards and the synths and that, and then you turn it, you know, like there's a great kind of constant chug going on there. You actually get going on there with a guitar doing that chug, stuff like that. It'd probably be a really good rock tune. Um, then you're on to Miss You Much. Now, not my type of tune, however, this is a classic tune and it's loaded with some fun, badass wah. Uh, Love Will Never Do Without You. I remember this one from back in the day. Um, read my notes way too heavily, but not really. And I do understand why I kind of remember it and I don't really remember it. It's really not, you know, like if you hear it, it's kind of like, Oh, okay. I think I remember that one, 
but it was never really a song he cared about all that much, you know, especially compared to songs I've already covered on here or a couple of songs I'm going to still talk about, you know, just like, eh, whatever. All right. Uh, this is another one I did not know prior to listening to this album, and I can definitely see why it's not memorable in any way, but... But the instrumental breakdown in it is pretty cool, which probably would have been left off the radio edits, which is more likely where I would have been exposed to it at. Uh, then we're on to Control. Uh, this is a good roller skating song again, but I'm not a fan. Uh, the pleasure, pleasure Principle, just kind of no thanks the whole way around. Black Cat, this is a surprising rocker. When I say rocker, I mean as a legitimate rocker. Um, like in league with uh, I Love Rock and Roll or Bon Jovi's You Give Love a Bad Name. Um, the guitar solo on here is pretty much something else too. This one really, I'm going to be honest, I might actually put this one in a mix in the future because I really do dig this one. I, Liz Hale could probably really do something good with this one too, you know. Uh, you know, there's quite a few that could do something good with this one. This is a good, good, good rocker. Uh, then we're on to the legendary Rhythm Nation. This is, once again, one of those songs, not my kind of song. But this song has got some real character to it, man. You can't help but dig on this tune. It's really a standout piece of work. And then, oof, the last four songs. Okay. So... Rhythm Nation is where this album ends for me. Because then you got That's the Way That Loves Goes, which is a slow song. It's not my thing. It's boring for Janet. Come Back to Me, another slow song. Yay. Let's Wait a While. So at this point, we're now up to your three slow songs in a row. And it's kind of like, really? What the hell is going on here? And then we got 24 play. Okay, and that's it. I'm done. Four, four slow songs in a row. And that's how they choose to end a classics collection. <laughs> so those last four songs, the slow songs, I'm going to say that they are more likely probably between 92 and 96 because that was a time period when music really sucked because it was that post-grunge kind of period. Like grunge was still around, but it was just kind of, it was gone unplugged for sure. And, you know... um, Kiss was getting back together and Rock was kind of ramping up, but Rock was relying on stuff they had done at that point, like 20 years ago. It was it was not a good time for music. It really wasn't. And Janet's only answer to keep relevant on the radio charts, on more than just R&B charts or whatnot, would be to release a lot of ballads, which is what Bon Jovi was doing at that time. Oh, hey, there's that comparison again. So, um, yeah, it all the way around... I'm not a Janet Jackson fan, but there are definitely a couple tracks on here that I would definitely keep. You know, Black Cat, that's one that will definitely end up in mixes in the future. Um, I will keep my recorded MP3 copies. I don't have a use for the CD. Uh, you know, I, it's not my thing. It goes with the rest of the digital music, most likely. All right. My thoughts, my opinions, my views. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions and views are. That's what the comment section is for. There's a like button, a subscribe button, a little bell for notifications. Uh, there is a link that will take you to Patreon. You can throw me some money that way if you like. Uh, peace. Love. Take care.